Okay, so uh, one more time. Because of technical difficulties on domain changes that we had in Seneca, we had some problem with our email. Therefore, the assignments and uh, the, the workshops that you have submitted down to this point, I did not receive it. Um, you probably have received a confirmation email or did not, I don't know. Because usually when you send it to yourself, it doesn't get filtered or when it goes to someone else's. Anyways, so uh, I didn't receive anything from uh, all your submissions. I did not receive any of them. So I reopened all the, sub, uh, the workshop submissions uh, and uh, this is what you're going to do. So uh, just to try and see if everything is good, I'm going to sub, I have a student account to test stuff with. So in here, I'm going to go uh, far to So Emanlu slash submit 144W1P1. Uh, oh, spell my own name. Okay. And part one, enter to start. So I submit, outputs match, and I'll go yes. And it submits, confirmations, email, yada, yada, yada. Now let's see if I received it. And there you go. That's my submission that just came through. Okay. So please uh, resubmit everything that you have done. And if you haven't submitted it, lucky, uh, you can uh, do it now and get the full mark. So uh, workshops uh, one and two, everything that you have done, please do it again and resubmit it to me. I really appreciate it. Oh, I learned already see three came through. Holy smoke. Okay, so it works. Uh, people just did it apparently right now through their laptops. So, so it is working, okay? So that's confirmation. Please submit them. Thank you very much. Uh, I promise that I'm going to make videos for all different types of developments. Uh, it is not an easy thing to do, but uh, because uh, I have to record everything for all those people who have Mac and Window and they want to do text. So I'm doing it in, three, in, in different ways, uh, using Visual Studio and uh, uh, so I'm going to do two things, Visual Studio and Xcode, three things, Visual Studio, Xcode, text mode, okay? So these three ways of developing something, and then two ways of submitting, one showing through GitHub, another one showing through FTP, okay? How to submit your code, so you can choose any of these. So five videos are going to come up. I already have posted a video that Kathy, my beloved colleague, actually posted for Xcode. If, I don't know if you have seen, seen that or not. Um, Mac people, uh, uh, have you seen those uh, videos, the three videos? Okay, so you need to, you need to uh, uh, click on the office button that we have on, uh, on our website. So you need to it is very important to it is very important to let me show it to you it is very important to you for you to click over here IPC, IPC once at least you do that it's going to take you to the app of course if you don't have the app Download it, but when you have it, you're going to come to this uh, channel. That is IPC144 Office and Help. You can post anything that you want in here, any questions, anything. And most importantly, the very first thing, Xcode How to Video. And you click over here. There are three videos, shows you how to compile, put uh, on matrix, do stuff. Everything over there is there. Uh, please take a look at these three videos to see how you use your Xcode. I will do another one. Um, my daughter has a Mac, so I'm privileged to, to, to use that one. She's pretty angry about it that I have to create an account in it, but hey, uh, an Xcode and all the things, but I will do it. And if anybody knows how to capture a video on Mac, let me know, because I don't know. I have to go research and find out how to do it. So um, if anybody knows how to record your screen as I'm doing on on here, oh, so he's gonna tell me <laughs> how to do it. Thank you. Okay, so um, that's good. So uh, uh, we are good to go. Now I'm gonna start. Uh, 
Uh, as usual, I'm going to start by creating a Visual Studio project. And um, um, I know I sound like a broken record. I keep doing it over and over. But because this is IPC, I want you to actually um, see it every time. So it kind of goes to your uh, subconscious routine. So you start the Visual Studio. 2022, not VS Code. Please do not install VS, VS Code. Visual Studio 2022. Create a new project. An empty project. This is when you want to start from scratch. Okay? And next. And you select a directory inside your repository. If you are using GitHub to do your work and keep track of your work. Do not create several copies of your, of your work. That's not a good practice, OK? One copy, and that's inside your Git. As, as, as long as you keep committing your work, Git will always remember where you were at and what did you have, and you will never use, lose it. So now we are in IPC 144, so I'll go to my IPC 144 repository in workshops, and here I will Create a directory. Oh, no, it's not workshops, actually. Notes, sorry. <laughs> In notes, here I am the fifth session on uh, February 1st. So I will create the project with that. So I select the notes directory. In your case, it's going to be workshops directory. Uh, select the folder. Name it properly. February 1st. Make sure this is checked. Do not uncheck this one. Make sure it's checked. It creates one directory, not nested. And after doing this, you have your work to start with. Now in here, I'm going to create, add a new item. I'm going to call it prg.c. And add. Include standard input output dot h int main void. And in here, I'm going to say printf uh, ipc 144nbb uh, 05 February 1st. OK, and go to new line. Return 0, Control F5 to compile and run. It compiles and runs it and shows the message, so I'm good to go. What do you do if you are, so I'm going to close this. What do you do when a new project is, a new workshop is posted? What you will do is, you go to your IPC 144 only repository which you have cloned. That's the repository that all our notes and everything's going to be in there. Never edit that. Cons consider that as a read-only thing. That the IPC 144 NBB only, that's mine. I put stuff in it, you read, okay, or copy. So do not edit stuff over there. Now, if I have an IPC 144 works in here repository anywhere, um, what I would do, uh, let's, let's say this IPC dev that you see is my repository, okay? So it's your, it's your IPC 144 works. So when, this, when I post something, the very first thing you do, right click over here, you go tortoise kit and you go pull. That receives all the new stuffs and brings it in. It says already up to date, which means I don't have anything. You can do it using command line two. It does not make any difference. So you can open git bash, or if you, have a, if you are a Mac user, just open a terminal and change the directory to the directory that you want to put the stuff in. Uh, present working directory. Oh. One more time. Let's see if it accepts backslash. 
no such viral directory. Hmm. Uh, because I'm on Windows, I am uh, changing the directory like that. If not, then I'm going to go through it step by step. I thought that I can. No, so let me see where am I? Where am I right now? I am in. Oh, so I am in my. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, present work uh, LS in. Working directory. Oh, I mean user far that. Okay, that's good. So uh, uh, one more time. Oh, my documents. That's the thing. So that's the name. My documents. I'll go to. Anyways, what you do over here, you say git pull, and it does the same thing. I don't want to just go through it. So if you do git pull in that directory, it will do it for you. Okay. Um, let me just to make it easy because that goes to D and we'll set that one later on. Okay, you, it does the same thing. The commands are all on the uh, uh, workshop. You know exactly what they are. After you have done this, you go to workshops and you copy the one that you want to work with and you go to the repository that you want to, the, your own repository that you want to work in and you paste it over there after pasting it over there, then you start working in it and you commit. So copy from my repository, put it in your own, and then start working in it. When it's like that, then you do not need to create uh, the uh, Visual Studio project anymore because it's already there. Second half of the semester, I'm not going to create it. It's going to be your re responsibility. But for first half, you just open the, the, the workshop that you're supposed to, open the lab that you're supposed to, double click on lab VCX proj, and it opens the Visual Studio ready for you to work. Okay? And everything is already set for you over there, just program. That's the only thing you need to do. Everything is there. Okay? So you have your main over there, you have your Marks, utils, whatever you want to work with, it's there to work. So that's what you do. I'm going to delete it from here because I don't want it to be here. But if I wanted to actually keep committing and doing my work, you right click and you say git commit. And when it comes up, you click on all and you say, say starting workshop two. Push and commit. The very first update is done. Now, I'm going to pull it because uh, this is not updated. If, it's, if it fails like that, it means you didn't have something uh, updated. Now, when I'll go back, now I'll do push one more time. Now it's going to work. That's one of the rules that you have to always do. Before you start working in a repository, first pull to make sure all the updates from upstream is downstream into your uh, computer. As you do your work, keep committing to update your repository. After everything is done and the workshop is done, you go to matrix, you pull it, and you submit it. OK? Um, that's going to be in the video. I'll put the video step by step, and everything's going to be there with text mode and everything. OK? So another thing, when you create a repository and you don't like a file in it, OK, do not delete the files using your operating system because those files are under supervision of Git now. So you have to tell to Git to delete it, not yourself. So if you want, if I do not want this file right now, which I don't, I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to say Tordis Git and I'm going to say either delete or delete keep local. Okay? So when I say delete, it just wipes it out. Delete keep local, it means it removes it from the repository but still let, let it be there. On git, it's the exact, it's the remove command. So you say git remove, and then you put the name of the file. It removes that one. So that's that. So um, very straightforward. Again, I'm going to put all these things on a video so you'll see. 
now I'm going to say remove. One file removed and it's done. And as you see, it's red, which means it's not committed. To delete it on the repository on GitHub, I have to do the same. So I have to go over here. Now I have to go commit. And I'm going to say deleted WS02. And I'm going to say commit and push. And now it's gone. Okay. And if you come over here, you can now delete this because it's just gone and you don't need it anymore. Okay. So that's that. Anyways, uh, so a very short uh, review on all the things we have done. Now, now that I have my, my uh, uh, workshop, uh, my uh, note already created, I'm not going to run it again. I'm just going to first, because it's something new and I just started, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit it, and I'm going to say, I'm going to click on all and say starting February first lecture, push and commit, done, now I'm going to open it, VCX project over here, another thing, Mac does it by default, I don't know how to remove the, this feature in Mac, but in Windows, you are programmers now. You are not users of computers. You are programming on your computer. You need to know what the extension of a file is. A file has a name and an extension. The last thing that comes after the dot is the extension of the file. This program has a C extension. That uh, top one is an SLN extension. The second one is VCXProj. The third one is VCXProj filters, so the extension is filters. The last one is VCXProj user, so the extension is user. That's the extension of the file. Please make sure you enable it. If you go to the view and options, in the options in the view section, you will say it says hide extension for no, known types. If you actually do that, if you actually hide, if you click on hide the extensions, you will see that Known types. Anyways, it's going to remove the extensions over here. If I say apply to folders, yes. Okay, let me see if it removes it. It didn't remove it now. I cannot believe it. Anyways, so uh, probably a new update or something. But anyways, make sure you have this thing unchecked. Hide extensions for known types. Apply. Okay. And apply to all files. So you can see it. If you, if you do not remove it, uh, it will remove the extension of the end of the files, and you will, by mistake, click on filters or users because you don't see the extension. So make sure you do that. And now, back to what we were doing. Because I have the, um, the file over here, the project created, I just double-click on it and open it and start the work for today. Before we begin, any questions? Any questions? One? Any questions? Yes. What is the question? Oh, the, the personal question with your, no, 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 that's, that's appointment on, on Teams or face-to-face -face when I have time, okay? Um, I'm back-to-back -to -back teaching today, but book an appointment on Teams, I'll help you on it. But general question about concept, because it's a class, I cannot do individual helps, okay? Uh, topic questions. Any topical questions about the subject? Okay. All right. So, uh, so, the very first thing I'm going to do, quickly go through what we've, uh, we've done. Uh, uh, we talked about, uh, we talked about, programming structure that we have in C. We say, uh, to start any program in C, we add these two statements at the top to make sure that the compiler is forgiving and will not give, you, give us warnings on uh, reading and writing. We include standard input output to read and write. Um, uh, we 
print using printf function. We read using readf, uh, scanf function. Um, the, uh, when we are printing information with printf, we, in a first argument of printf, we put what we want. Uh, and if we want to insert anything in what to get printed, we put format specifiers inside the, uh, the statement we want to print. These format specifiers are percent %d for integer numbers, percent %f for float numbers, percent %lf for doubles, and percent %c for single characters. Uh, with scanf, works the exact same way, but with scanf, the only thing that's going to be in the format of the function is what we read and nothing else because scanf only reads, it doesn't print anything. And it goes like that, very simple and straightforward. So that's the first thing. Any questions on this? We talked about different, uh, we talked about uh, functions and how the functions are, are uh, called and used. And we said that every single, everything that we write in C language is a function. The function you are writing uh, will be called if you call its name with empty parentheses in front of it. So when you are introducing a function, when you are, uh, Oh, yeah, when you are uh, introducing, uh, creating a function, you write what you want the function to return, what you want the function to receive, and that becomes the signature of the function. Then you put that signature at the beginning of any function that wants to use that, and that becomes the introduction of the function, or what we call it, as a prototype. to use it to, to calling functions. So by doing this, now main can call a function. To call a function, you remove the types and you put values inside. Because these types mean nothing, it means you do, you put nothing when you call them. So essentially when you actually, if you want to actually call this function, you have to say cal some and nothing in there. You are calling a function, removing a type, putting values instead, nothing is there. Therefore, when this function is called, it's gonna ask you to print two numbers, yada, 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 and find the sum and do whatever that it is. Now I have build errors, let's see what's the error. The error over here says, uh, scanf is unsafe, consider using yada, yada, yada. Do not listen to that. Scanf underline S over here that says consider using it. It's not as standard C function. It doesn't run on anything other than Windows. Don't use it. Instead, add what I um, asked to add at the, uh, on the first one, which is define secure warnings, yada, yada, yada. That's, that's the most important thing to do. You do that, it means you're telling the compiler to shut up. I know what I'm doing, okay? and you run it, and now it prints the, the thing, and enter two numbers, 20 and 10, and the sum is 30, and it prints it, and so on and so forth. So that's how a function is written and called. The very first function that you have is main that receives nothing and returns an integer. That integer that it returns, for now it's only zero. It means it tells to operating system zero was returned. So when operating system runs your program, it receives a zero from your program, which we don't need to know what is that. We're going to find out soon enough. That is uh, a quick review on functions. So again, what it receives, what it returns. For now, we know what it returns. We don't know how it's, what it receives. We're going to go through that soon. So we did our function review. The next thing we need to do is to 
to see, to be able to do what computer is made for, which is essentially repeating something quickly, okay? And we said that repetition happens with a loop. I know everybody's bored, but I'll have to review this before we begin, before we continue. Don't worry, the material is gonna come quicker as we go. To, to make something happen over and over and over, we can simply put it in a, uh, what we call a loop. The standard loop that we learn is called while, and in while, you put over here a condition. This condition is something that it checks every single time to see if it's true, it continues doing it. So if I say over here while one, and I put over here, zero is false in C, and anything but zero is true. So if I actually run this program of mine, this program never ends. It's an endless loop because that is always true. It's going to keep calculating some for me. So, and again, and again, and again, forever and ever, okay? I have to control C it to get out, okay? Because we are lucky, okay? Sometimes the control C doesn't work and you have to shut down the program, and the program doesn't shut down, then you have to reboot the computer. So endless loops are not very good. So we can always replace these with conditions, and conditions come with operators. And when we talked about operators, we said operators are, they come in many different shapes and ways. We have, uh, Operators like this. So I'm going to just put it over here, go through them very quickly again. So operators in C are as follows. The, uh, so if we assume A is 10 and B is 20, and these are variables, okay? Okay, the very first operator, that we, let's say, let's put it this way. I'm gonna do it like this. If I have an integer A and integer B, the very first operator we know, it's called set. It sets things. So you can say A is set to 10, or you can say B is set to 20. That sets it, sets it as that. Every single operator in C language returns something with no exception. It's not like math, it's computer assignment. So that equal operator is called set, not assignment. Assignment is something else that we're gonna see later on. What does it mean? The, the checking for, uh, um, so it, it assigns A to B, but uh, equality is different thing. It doesn't compare the two, it sets the left to the right. And at, after it sets it, it returns that value. So if I have something over here like in C, I can simply say C is set to A is set to B is set to 30, which means now A, B, and C are all 30 because B becomes 30, 30 is returned to A, A becomes 30, 30 is returned to this one, and C becomes 30, and it returns to cyberspace and nobody's using it. Are we okay with this? Are we good? Next thing, operators. So back to A, set to 10, A and B set to 20. Um, let's put something like, uh, let me see what do we have. A 15 and B 10. Let's do this. So A plus B. The sum of the two, A plus adds the two, 25, puts it in C. B is equal to A to equal to C, then C is 25, A becomes 25, B two becomes 25, everything's uh, 25. Why did I say 30 over there? <laughs> okay. Now A set to 11, B set to 4, A minus 4 is Seven, good, okay, so just, I know, it's a kindergarten, but we have to do it. <laughs> Can't believe that we are doing this in college, but that's okay. A divided by B, 
That's, that's a tricky one. So A in here, say A is, A is 11 and B is 4. 11 divided by 4 is? Because it's an integer, you only do the whole part. The partial part goes to garbage. So 11 divided by 4 is? 2. That's it. It's not 2 point something. If I had double values, then I would have partials. But integers and doubles are completely two different things. Partials are incapable of holding stuff. Therefore, that's going to be the value for it. Just remember that. Modulus, 11 mod 4. What is 11 mod 4? Modulus is the remainder. What is the remainder of it? Done. So that's it. So I'm sorry that I'm telling you this, but I have to. So 11, 2, 4 is 8, 8. Uh, 11 minus 8, that's 3. I'm sorry, but that's 3. So that's modulus. Um, then we have logical operators. Logical operators are operators like any other ones, but their job is to compare values. Okay? So if I say A greater than B, A is 11, B is 4, the result is true. True. When C tells us true, it's always 1. But when C examines for truth or falsehood, Anything but zero is true. So C will be one in this case. Now, this is called assignment checking, comparison. So it compares A and B. If they are equal, it's one. If they are not, it's zero. Because they are not equal, C becomes zero. And these are the one greater than, less than, greater than or equal, less than or equal, or equal or not equal. So if I say C is set to A not equal to B, that means they are not equal. Are we okay with this? All right. All right. So now we can actually write loops that do something for us. So if I want to do this thing three times, now I can use all these procedures to do whatever I want to do. So now I can actually create counters and go through counters to do certain things few times. And this counter can be done in many different ways. So I can do the counting like this. Although the program runs like this when integer is on line 45, but that's not a standard thing in C. Because most of the compilers you are using is C++ and latest versions of C, they accept you creating a variable halfway through your program. Uh, Standard C application says variables must get created after open curly bracket, open accolade, whatever you call that, <laughs> okay? So you have, to, you have to put it over there. If you put it down here, it's going to work, but later on if it moves to another platform, what is a platform? <laughs> Operating system, computer, compiler, these three things. When these three things are... Uh, Change, it might not compile. So you should always follow the standard to make sure your code is portable. Now, if I write something like this, I'm saying while num is less than 3, keep going. So it's going to print num plus 1. Therefore, it's going to print 1 more than 1. The plus is not added to num. It's just that one. And then it calculates sum, adds 1. You can shorthand plus 1 in C with plus plus. So if you want to add 1 to a variable, instead of writing a is equal to a plus 1, you can just write a plus plus to add 1 to it quickly. Okay? This is pretty tricky, so don't, don't mix it with assignment. Okay? Don't say a is equal to num plus plus. You've got to get confused. That's for future. Okay? Use it standalone by itself if you want to use it. Or we could use other shorthand uh, statements too. So, so all the things that we have, plus, minus, um, division, multiplication, and modulus, all these things can be shorthanded. How they can be shorthanded, if I have a is equal to a plus b, you can always say a plus equal b. So that's the shorthand version of this. So this is potatoes, this is potatoes. Okay, same thing, no difference, okay? So these two are identical. Now, replace the plus with minus, a is equal to a minus b, a minus equal b. 
a is equal a divided by b, a divided equal by b. Multiplication, multiplication. Modulus, modulus. They all work. You can shorthand it replacing those values in here. These are just shorthand stuff if you want to do. If you are not comfortable, just write the long version until you are used to it. You, you get the logic, then you can use the shorthand stuff. Yes? Then you can't do it. Then you have to write B plus B. <laughs> the question was, what is a shorthand for this? The answer is nothing. It has to be that way, OK? I receive many help cards. I, I receive many help calls from, from students asking questions that are all mentioned in the assignment and notes and everything. Uh, I have no problem helping you. Please keep, keep the questions coming and appointments coming. No problem. Uh, but what I want to ask you that be, be more precise as you are going forward. Being exact and reading. Uh, there is a statistical fact that says when you are sending an email more than three lines, usually the rest is not read. People read the first three lines and they just, OK? It's the same thing with the assignment. When you look at the assignment, you see where the lab begins. You ignore everything that it says. You go to the beginning of the lab, start working from there. And you miss all the things that you are supposed to do to be successful, OK? So it's boring, but read. It's an extremely important thing. It's going to save your life someday, OK? Literally. You go to the airplane, that little thing that they give you, eh, you put it over there. It's not going to happen to me. But when it hits the fan, those people who read it live. The rest die, OK? So read. It's good for your health. Trust me, OK? Anyway, so that's that. So um, those are loops that we went through. While loop, you can put a condition over there and do whatever you want to do with it. New information coming, OK? New information coming. <sighs> so a little bit of talking a little bit of electricity. So, Say this is a battery. This is not a battery. Yeah, this, wow, I have to push it really hard. <laughs> this is a battery, OK? And I get a wire from here, and I take it down, and I put it over here. And then what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to put a little switch over here like this and bring it over here. And I'm going to put a little light bulb and go over here. So this is going to be my light bulb. Are we OK with this? So for this thing to actually work, the electricity must go through here, pass through here, and go back to the battery for the light to go on. Is that correct? OK. That is a true-false statement in computer science. Now your condition is, what is this condition, true or false? False, because the light is not on, correct? It is false. Now, to make this true, what can I do? To make this true, I can do this. I'm going to pause. So if I have something like this, now the condition is true, correct? Which means the, the electricity passes through and light goes on. Are we OK with this? Any Problem with this? No, right? <clears throat> so what if I have something like this? This is A. This is B. I have condition A and B. What does it mean? How can? The light go on when both are true. So first of all, how many different positions these two key, key keys can take? Four, right? Four. Both on, on, off, 
on off, 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 right? Right? So for this condition to go true, they both have to be true, correct? We call this and. Two ampersands. So and means this. When you have two conditions, they're both true, the condition is true. So this means, so now you know what, what's going on, right? That's called and, so remember that. And is that. Are we okay with this? Right, okay. So that's and. Now take a look at this. What if I have this? Whoa, that's as ugly as it can get. Let me make it a little better. So this is A, and this is B. Now I have two conditions, A and B. OK? How can the light go on? Either of them. So essentially, if A is closed, if it's true, light goes on. If B is closed, true, light goes on. If A and B are both true, light goes on. The only way for light not to go on is for both to be false, correct? We call this A or B. Okay? So that's an or. The other one is an and. Do we understand this? So when you have or, that's how the conditions work. When you have and, that's, and that's the two things that we are adding. Or and and to our, so you don't only put one condition. You can say if A is less than B or B is greater than 5. You can do that. And you can keep adding these ors as you go. It becomes more complicated, but hey, the concept works the same. If you have three of them and you want to make it or, three of them goes like this. Right? Now you have A, B, and C being set like that. Correct? And now, if you have something like this over here, What is the situation? I'll just assume that this is the, 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 this is the key over there. Then you have A or B or C and D, right? That's the situation. So you can always have these things and the light goes on and off. That light is in your for loop. If that light is on, sorry, in your while loop, that, when that light goes on, while keeps going. When that light is off, while stops running. Are we okay with this? All right, that's it. So, thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's clear all. We don't need this anymore and stop drawing and just show you. So in here, if I have res is set to A less than B, A less than B or uh, C um, not equal to D. If I write something like this, what's going to be the value of res? I'm saying A less than B or C not equal to D. It's actually true. Huh? What do you mean prep? I just draw you that thing. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. This is A less than B. So in here, let me see if I can actually. Can I have that thing that I gave you? <laughs> So I'm going to bring the condition down so we can see the condition.
So that's the condition we are talking about. And this one is now, this one is now A less than B. And this one is C not, not equal D. Now looking at that, what is the value of res? Thank you. The value of res is true, correct? So that's the conditions I'm talking about. This is a condition, this is a condition. Now these conditions are so you can. And when you are dealing with or, really think about it. When you say A less than B, that's true, right? Or you need to check the rest? No. So remember that when you have or, just stop. You know it's true. Don't bother. As a matter of fact, compiler will do that. So in here, if you put something that executes, compiler won't even execute it. Don't won't even do anything about it. It's the same thing with and. If I had over here something like this, if I had over here something like this, if I said the res is set to C not equal to D and A, A less than B. If I did something like this, you say C, res is C not equal to D. C and D are equal, right? So this is false, correct? You don't need to check the rest. It's false. So remember, and is true only if both are true, or is true is false only if both are false. Remember that. So truth is unique for and, falsehood is unique for or. For or, everything have to be false for, uh, for it to be false. For uh, and, everything has to be true to be true. But anyways, so these are the conditions. So this is false, and this is, this is true, this is false. OK? Are we OK with this? OK, so you're going to uh, deal with these things a lot, <clears throat> and uh, uh, we'll go through it as we go forward in the subject. <coughs> <clears throat> so when you go home, do this really. Do a printf that prints A, B, and C, and put these statements inside your printf to show it, and then show the value of the result. So do like this, printf. and say is percent %d new line and literally put this value here. You don't need to put it in anything. You don't need to uh, put it in any variable. Just do it like that. Because printf wants to print this, right? It's either true or false. If it's true, it prints 1. If it's false, it prints 0, correct? So keep doing all those things over and over to see exactly what the output is. So in here, I'm going to say printf A, B, C, and D. And obviously, this is percent D, comma. Have the values like this, and then keep printing them as I showed you. So when you do something like this, <clears throat> then I'm going to keep this one. And you don't need the rest. Do like that, and it shows you exactly which one is one, which one is true. So you can actually follow through it and see why. Okay, and and don't be be hard on yourself. Like do this, right? A less than B, uh, and uh, or, let's say uh, or 
c less than or equal to d and put it in parentheses and say and. So keep going like that and, and try them and see what they are. Try to guess, follow the rule that I told you, find out what are the answers one by one and then add them together and see what the result is going to be. So keep doing that and here I'm going to say and a is greater than d, something like that. So if you do something like this, and you print it, then you want to see that. What does it say? What did I do wrong? Oh, thank you. <laughs> So you can see exactly, oh, I need to put a is percent D. Yeah. So you see exactly what it is. Okay, so keep going, keep doing like that and challenge yourself with it. So this one is going to be C logical. All right, so that's that. Now, the next thing we want to learn over here is functions receiving values. We just did function returning values. I want to see how can I write a function to repeat, to, to, to receive values. How can we do that? Function receiving values take it from their mouth that is here. Okay? This is what they return. Okay? So every function that you write works that way. For example, uh, if I write a function called say hello, so I'm going to say this returns nothing. So in here, void, say hello. And in here, I'm going to say int how many times? So now, I can actually give to the function some value to work with. So now, I can bring the function down here. As you see, the name of the argument in the introduction doesn't matter. Okay? It's just the type that is important. When you write the prototype, usually you are very descriptive in what the arguments are because that's what people see when they are looking at your code. And that's what you see three months later after, you, after, you, after you've done your code because after three months, your code is as foreign to you as if someone else wrote it. Okay, so you go over there, you say, say hello, how many times? Now you know that you have to pass how many times to it. In here, you are putting an O because that's what you're doing, it, so it's fine. So now in here, I'm going to say int cnt, counter is equal to zero, add go by usual thing while. Uh, cnt is less than number. I'm going to say printf percent d and dash. And then in here, I'm going to say CNT um, CNT and CNT plus plus. CNT plus one. And in here, I'm going to say print. Uh, oh, and let's just say hello over there. Okay. So. Now my say hello is actually getting how many times I'm going to say hello. So now in main, I can pass values to it. I can say, say hello 100 times. So what happens is that when this function is called, when this function is called, it passes the 100 to an O. So when we come over here, because, so essentially, when the function is called, the function will be called as, as follows in here. This is how the function is called behind the scene. 
The function is called say hello int n o equals 100. That's how the function will be called when you put 100 in here. So when function is called, n o becomes 100. And now, when the function actually executes and goes through it, it's going to print. What happened? Oh, did it print it? Yeah, it's going to print hello 100 times. OK? So not only that, I can do this. I can say integer uh, num. And in here, I'm going to say printf how many times I should say hello. And then I'll go scanf percent %d address of num. And then I'm going to say, say hello num. So when this function is called, it will be say hello int n o is equal to num, whatever the num is. Does that make sense? So now we can give stuff to functions. So these number of stuff that you can put over here is, let's say, limitless. You're not going to put 50 of them over there, but you will see that part two, you are passing lots of stuff to it. OK? So for example, uh, I can do this. Uh, so let's run this first. So as you see, it says, how many times I should say? What happened to the rest of it? Oh, it's a bug. It's, it's a bug in Windows. My apologies. OK. So in here, I'm going to say four. Now it's going to say hello four times. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? So say I want to draw some lines over here. And so now, now I can actually write, uh, so I can actually write something like this, void line. OK? And then in this line, I'm going to say a character fill with what character I want to fill the line and integer length. What I wanted the length of the, uh, of the line to be. So I'll bring it down. Right? And please appreciate the fact that these functions doesn't have to be in the same file. I can put it in another file. OK? There's no problem with that. Now, in here, because again, I'm lazy, I'm going to put over here f and l and len. Yes? Line 4 and line 14. You mean int? Yeah. No, the name of the argument? No. I, on purpose, I put it different to show you that you can use the prototype of the function to be descriptive what the argument receives. And then abbreviate it when you're actually coding it. So you don't have to type long names. But it is very good practice to put meaningful stuff. So I don't mind if I see this. Care to fill the line with. Who cares? That name's not going to be used. It's just for introduction. But when you look at the function, you say, line, character, character, oh, I know that. OK, right. So now I know how this function works. But if I put over here, line, character, C, int, L, nobody knows what those things are for, right? That's why we can actually put anything we want. What compiler is, actually, many bad, I, I call it bad programmers, and sometimes my colleague do that, colleagues do that. You can even do this. Awful, awful thing to do. You cannot even put name for it, because all the compiler needs to know, how am I supposed to call the line? The first one is a character, the second one is an integer. That's all it needs. We use the extra spaces to be descriptive so people understand what the function is doing. Does that answer the question? OK, so I'm going to put it like that. 
Now in here, I'm going to do the exact same thing. See, the logic is exactly the same thing. So I'm going to just copy and paste over there. That's len. OK. And in here, I'm going to, oops. And in here, I'm just going to say put char. Put char puts one character. So you don't have to write the format thingy. It's easier. OK. So in here, I'm going to put the f. And at the end, when I'm all set and done, I'm going to say put char. A new line. There you go. I just created a line, a function that draws a line. Now I can actually put lines in here and says, say, uh, oh, I've, I, I removed that thing there. Where is it? Um, there we go. I want this. So now I can actually do something like this, write it over here. And then they say line uh, with assignment and put 30. And at the end, when I'm done, so when this 100 is done, I'm going to do another line. And I'm going to do that with pluses for 15. Let's make this one 40. And then. And after I do this, I'm going to say line dash 50. So now the function line is being used in three different ways. It can actually act in many. So the first one is doing with plus. How many? So the, at the top, when the top, why did I print 100? Anyways, it, it shows the February 1st thingy. It draws a line with, with assignments. Then over here, it draws a line with pluses. How many lines should I say? So I'm going to say five. Now it's going to put dashes underneath. So your functions can behave differently based on what you pass to them. Are we OK with this? All right? So now, yeah, that's that. So I'm in here, I'm going to say uh, d functions with receiving arguments. So these are called arguments. So when I say this function receives two arguments, it means it receives two values, whatever they are. Are we OK with this? OK? And a good programmer, like if I, if I always want to have my hellos printed with a title at the beginning, at the end, or something like that, then I can actually call the line and say hello. I can do that. So you don't have to write it right before every and each of them. So, so I, I could have done it like this. I could say, uh, um, first of all, this printf thingy, I'm going to put it in a title. So I'm going to say void title uh, character line fill or fill line width. OK, so that's my title. And I put the title down here. And I put these two things in here not to, not to clutter my space. So as you see, doing something like this, so in here I'm going to say fill line width and 40. So when I actually run the I can actually say over here, instead of that, I can say title with dashes. So now it's going to show the title. I don't. So in here, I'm going to print the title with dashes and say hello. You can put some. So the line can be called anywhere. And you can make your, funct your program more readable and more functional as you go through it. So yeah, so at any moment when you are writing a program and you see something is getting repeated over and over, I see I'm saying, say hello line. Say hello line. If I'm supposed to print the line after every line, I put the hello. But let's put that one inside. So you can actually do that. Remember that. So you, when you see repetitive code in your application, that craves for a function. Properly named with properly named arguments. So when people read your code, they are reading a pseudocode. What is a pseudocode? Machine, uh, machine code in human language, right? So in English, we mention what we do in the, 
your program, your main program, the name of the functions should look like a pseudocode. That's how your program is supposed to be. When you look at your main, functions should tell what your program is doing. Now, if anybody's interested in parts of your functions, they can go inside and see how it's done. If they're not interested, they just look at your main and they know what's going on. Okay? So you can go for, actually, somebody was, wanted to talk to me uh, during the break. Who was it? No, a lady actually asked for help for something on Microsoft Teams, and I said during the break, should I look at my Microsoft Teams? What's your name? Maybe it was you. Was it you? Let me pause. Decision making. We talked about loops and how to put condition in loops to repeat something. But how do we make decisions? Like how many times saying hello is too much? Okay? So I don't want people to say 10,000 and I'll do it. I want them if they say between 1 and 20 times is acceptable, not more than that. Something like that, right? So if I want to do that, how do I do it? First of all, let's see what is the structure, the statement to do it. We have a statement in C language called if. So with that if statement, you can actually test the values and according, based on test the conditions and based on conditions, do something or do something else instead. So if I say, for example, integer num and uh, We created a utils thingy somewhere, right? I'm going to add new items, and I'm going to put over here utils, the utils.c that we created. So I'm going to have that get, get int of mine. So in here, I'm going to create uh, uh, int get int. Oh, I can't do that. Forget it, forget it, forget it. Never mind. Don't save. Never mind, never mind. So in here, I'm going to have num. Now I'm going to say printf. Uh, enter a number. And do a scan F to get it. Okay. Now I can actually write an if statement. And if statements, things happen based on conditions that I'm doing. So I'm going to say if num is greater than 10. Then you put what you want to happen if num is greater than 10. Now I'm going to say printf the number is greater than 10. Something silly, but just, just writing like that. If that doesn't happen otherwise, now otherwise we say else. In here I'm going to say printf the number is less than or equal to 10. Why? Because, because if it's not greater than it could be 10, right? Now, based on the execution, the, based on the way this is working, oh, sorry, address of num. So it comes over here, gets an integer over here. When I put over here 20 and I hit enter, it comes in. Now num has the value of 20, therefore the condition 20 greater than 10 is a true value. Because it's true, it comes to the first part of the if statement and says the number is greater than 10. Obviously that's printed. But the else part is completely ignored. So the else part will not happen. So with an if else statement, you can decide what to do. OK? So that's the basic way that you want to deal with, uh, uh, what should we call it, um, an if statement. So um, let me save it over here. I'm going to say, oh, that's. E. 
So let's say with the hello thingy that I'm, that I'm writing over here, I'm going to say uh, how many times I should say hello. And I'm getting the number. Now, <clears throat> if the number is greater than 10, that's too much, right? So I'm going to say, but, so, so I'm going to say over here, too many times, too many hellos. I can't do that. OK? Otherwise, I'm going to come over here and say, uh, say hello. Num times. So now, this program of mine is not going to print 2,000 of it. It's just going to print that much. So if I run the program once, and I say 20, it's going to say too many hellos. I can't do that, right? But if I do it, run it over here, and I say 5, now it's going to say 5 hellos. OK? So now you can decide what to do. Now, when it's greater, when it's greater than then when you come over here, is it possible that I make a boo-boo in here? So first, let's. Um, so in here, I'm going to say EFG if for validation. So essentially, I am, vali I am validating user's input like this, right? So now, in here, instead of that, uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to see if this thing is actually working properly. So if I do it like this, and I'll go minus 2, then what happens? That's wrong, right? So if it's greater than then, else could be negative, right? So. In here, I can have another if. I can say in here, if num is less than 1, I have to say uh, printf no hellos for you. And in here, I'm going to say else. So these things can be nested. There is no problem with it. You can put an if inside an else of another if. Imagine any open bracket and a closed bracket, a block of code independent for its own. So at the beginning, I'm saying if it's not greater than then, it's going to say too many hellos. If it's not greater than then, then I should see if it's less than one or not. So I'll come down in here inside this, and I'm going to say if it's, if it's not greater than, but if it's less than one, then no hellos for you. Otherwise, say hello. OK? So um, and I, if I run it now, if I go minus 3, it's got to oh, I'll put 0, 3. My apologies. <laughs> if I put minus 3 over here, it's got to say no hellos for you. And if I go 20, 30, it's got to say too many hellos. And if I actually print it properly, now it's going to say 5 hellos, right? So. G H if for validation. Oh, the other one I call I put it validation too. Somebody teach me how to type. Okay, E F G H if for validation. Let's see. Okay. Now sometimes you don't care if the user is is giving less or more. You don't want to give different messages. If the value is valid, you're going to do it. Otherwise, you're going to say invalid values. Try again. Run the program again. So in here, I have to say, if num is greater than 10, right? And sorry, if num is less than 10 or equal to 10, and num is greater than 1 or equal to 1. What does it mean? It means here, definitely, num is between 1 and 10, correct? Because they, with an AND statement, both have to be true. The only way both have to be true, can be true is that num is between 1 and 10. Are we OK with that? Obviously, mathematically, it's always mm, better to put 
It doesn't make any difference. It's just, I think, better readable if I do it like this. Because you go from small to big, so if it's greater than 1 and less than 10, right? Now in here, I'm going to say hello. And in here, I'm just going to print one message. So send hello with num, how many times I have. <coughs> Printf percent %d is an invalid value. And in here, I'm going to say uh, 1 uh, greater than or equal value less than or equal to 10. So I'm not going to give too many information over here. I'm just going to say how many hellos I would say. It's 20. It's just, well, sorry. I have to put the num in here. I have to show what is... <laughs> Being thing, right? So now if I put over here 50, it's going to tell me 50 is an invalid value, one on that. Are we okay with this? Any questions down to this point? E, F, G, H, I, <coughs> if for validation. <clears throat> now, wait a minute. What if? So, they are entering the num, right? How many times did you say hello? And they are entering a value, right? What if I don't want them to keep running the program? I want to keep asking them for the value until they come to their senses. I can simply put the entire thing in a loop, right? So in here I can say, <clears throat> while the exact same condition okay, but this is a true value, right? In here, I have to have while the value is invalid, it has to do it, right? This is the condition for validation. I have two ways to fix this. Either correct it, so for this thing to be invalid, invalid, okay? For this thing to be Invalid, num should be less than 1 or greater than 10, right? So the condition for it to be invalid, it's either this I'm going to comment that. So I'm going to say while num is less than 1 or it is greater than 10. So if any of these two happen, if num is less than that one or greater than that one, it's going to come and start doing it, right? But the problem is that num doesn't have a value. It's garbage. So we should make it invalid right at the beginning. So in here, I'm going to make num 0, which is an invalid thing, right? So the condition becomes true. It comes inside, asks, and it won't let me go until I give it the right value. So now if I ru run the program, it works the exact same way, but the difference over, did I uh, uh, edit the right file? No, I didn't. It's the other one. C uh, copy. Sorry, I put it in the wrong one. So let me put this one here. My apologies on this. X. And this one goes back to the one that I made a boo boo with, which is this one. OK, one more time. So now, if I run the program, I'm just going to run it and then walk through it. How many times? I'll go 40. 
40 is invalid. How many times? I say minus 1. It says minus 1 is invalid. Then I'm going to say over here 5. Now it's going to say, oh, finally. Okay? So it's going to actually... So now validation is actually making sense. I can keep asking the user over and over. So combination and if, if statement and while loop and things like that helps me to go through this. Okay. <clears throat> Obviously, when I have something like this, instead of doing this, so in here, in here, I'm going to say uh, J uh, loop and if for validation. But when I write a program like this, instead of, that, this is actually, uh, and let me just take this, uh, explain this one. So I have two ways I said to do this, either to write the while like this. Another way of doing this is just to negate. So this is, this condition that you see over here is a valid condition, right? This condition is a valid condition, correct? Right? What is opposite of valid? Right? So I can simply say not. Exclamation mark is a unary operator that makes true false, makes false true. I can simply say not that if I'm lazy. Okay? So two different ways. You can either do that or write the new one. If you have the correct condition, it's always easier to just copy the condition, put a not in front of it. Okay? So this works the exact same way. No difference. And again, I changed it in the wrong place. <sighs> okay. Copy. Save that. Works in, a, in exact same way. Also, what is this action? It's greetings, right? Five minutes to classes. It's greetings, right? So I can just, I can just do this. Uh, I can just take this away and say. Greetings, right? And then say over here, void, uh, greetings. Greetings is written with an A, not, sorry, English is fourth language. That's correct, right? That's greetings, right? Or it's the other one was right. Which one is right? Double E is right? Double E is right, okay. 40 years in Canada still. Okay, so, greetings. And I do that, and I come down over here. I do void greetings, void, and just write the greetings in here. And obviously, I need the num in here. So in here, I'm going to say uh, int num. So in here is going to be int num. And in here, I'm going to say no. So you can do stuff like this to make it short. So while that, greetings, no. OK? So you got to do, well, um, again, I'm not going to do it. I'm just, I just showed you that I can, OK? Uh, you can always pack things that are too difficult and too cluttering into a function. There is no problem with it, OK? Everything can be converted to a function if you want to. It's as simple as that. So that's that. It works the same way. And I think we are good down there. So now we know if and else. Uh, we know loop, while loop. And the next time you're coming in, I'm going to show you different variations of it. So a while loop can be written as do while. A while loop can be written as for loop. It's just different syntax for the same action. I can do repetition in three different ways. An if statement can be done with if and else, and then another if, else, whatever I want. Or it could be if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else. Different 
different formats for the same thing. Or you can select certain things based on a value. You can say, if value is 5, jump to here. If value is 2, jump to here. So you can, we have different types of de decision making structures. What I told you now is enough to write anything you want. Anything else that I'm giving you is just different variations of the same thing. So what you have right now, repetition, decision making, is enough to do anything you want. OK? Uh, the rest of it is just uh, spices added to the food. OK? Uh, any questions down to this point? Yes. Yes, you can declare. Okay, uh, let me tell. Let me tell you this. Let me tell. There's something I have to tell you. If somebody is, we have a like we have an intercom system connected to all Seneca. Okay, if somebody goes to the main building, main office of Seneca, and says, "Jack, come to office." What's going to happen? All jacks are going to come. So it's not a good idea to put a variable out there. If you put a variable out there, it becomes a file scope variable, which means all the functions in the file, we have access to a variable. And that becomes confusing. It's better to always localize your variables unless you have to. Like, if I want to have a variable for pi, 3.14156295, if I want to have that variable, it's never going to change. That makes sense to be global because it's something that everybody's going to use and it's going to remain the same. But if you want to get someone's age and you make the age global, then you don't know which logic's age. So it's always with caution. Okay, for now, let's not do it until we, we get a hang of it. Are we okay? Are we okay, one? Are we okay, two? Okay, thank you. Please book an appointment for problems for tomorrow. It's very important. And please do not.